fitting that the crowd does that today because that's the way they started the series. When the Jays first took the field Friday night, a thunderous standing ovation got them on their way to two wins over Baltimore. Today, it's a tribute to the champions of the American League East. Nunez takes the mound for his warm-up pitches. First start since he's been called back, one of the bright young arms of this article. Of the running game especially. And many times you'd see him sitting along Cito Gaston or conversing with Al Widmar about pitchers' moves. Valuable information is his hand. He and Brenly with the two key offseason moves, the veterans with experience, one worked out. Brenly, of course, picked up by the San Francisco Giants. Don't know if he will be eligible for postseason play and if they've set their roster yet. Roger Craig knew what he had done for him when he was earlier in his career and earlier even before Craig took over the managerial job for the Giants. So he wanted him back with his, his attitude. Sent him first to Phoenix, then back to the big team when he left Toronto. One ball, two strikes to John. Been a memorable month for the young man. Signed. One of the big attractions was that he get up for the final month that he's contributed with a single here right now. What a quick batty on huh? Trying to sneak the ball inside on him, and he turns it to the right side with the man on base. He's at first, Lawless at second, one out for Greg Myers. I would think that's right where the catcher Hoyles and the pitcher Bautista wanted to get it. Up and in to see it, and that's sometimes the trademark of a good or a bad hitter. The good hitter, sooner or later you're going to have to learn to hit the fastball inside somewhere. And so they're testing it. And he showed he can hit the fastball up and in, and Bautista's got a good one. Once you lose the ability to hit a fastball, you can about count your days on how many you have left in the major league. That's when the veterans know in the twilight days of their career that it's all over when that happens. Greg Myers has not had a hit today. Get into a double play in the second. You see the Blue Jays left-handed catcher of the future? Maybe, but we'll have to show more with the bat than he has in his time in Toronto this year. A little over 200 swings through that. He's down on two. Was after a bad pitch down low. Myers is gone. Two out. Batista, despite the two singles, impressed with his outing for Baltimore. How about that fourth ball, huh? Guy that throws that hard, you can throw that pitch. So there's a young arm in the waiting to go along with some of the young arms they've developed this year or traded for. Fastball strike to Rob Ducey. He set this today. on the final day of the official attendance here. That is high, one and one. And Sky Dome will be jumping starting next Friday with game three of the championship series right here. Inside two. Two and one. Batista continues to throw hard. I don't know if he's throwing as hard as Ben McDonald, but he's close. A couple of other good arms. Uh, Raldo Peraza, under that name, he came up with arm problems. He comes back. It's another young arm they control in the pot, the Orioles. Jose Mesa, another one. 
Into the Flanagan deal. Yep. Go for the bat on if he can come back. I think a very strong pitching staff again next year. Baltimore at that time gave away a lot of their present to their future, but the future is rapidly becoming right now. A full count to Ducey. Two out, two on. Goes down low to foul it off. Now Sparky's Tigers win one. Small consolation in the final day as they beat the Yankees 5-3. to three. Sparky's got a tee-off time Tuesday all set back home in California. Yeah, he said he'd be there tomorrow, except he's got to do some spots or substance abuse with the coach of the Detroit Pistons, Chuck Daly. So he's uh, heading right out there for Tuesday. They go to the playoffs, World Series A. There was a little uh, Pascal Perez in this situation, stepping off, trying to trick him. the thrill if in fact Rob Ducey is put on the postseason roster for the Canadian kid to come home in the Sky Dome and get a chance to participate in the League Championship Series but maybe the ultimate dream of World Series especially after all the knee woes he's had this oh, year down to Syracuse rehabilitation a marvelous ending to his story for the season Batista working on the ending to the regular season. And Ducey refuses to let it go. Well, again, if Ducey is going to be on the roster and see postseason action, these are important at-bats for him. Blue Jays fourth round is coming home. Followed by the fifth. Rob Ducey's got a two RBI double. Well, I'll bet you the umpires in this series are very happy that when postseason player rules uh, rolls around, but they're going to have six umpires, one down each line, so we can watch those much more closely. The shots in the left and right corner with the fans reaching out of the railings. What a battle Rob Ducey gave. Bautista, huh? Foul off, good fastball, foul him off. One of the pupils the last two springs, uh, and Cena would like to say prize pupils, maybe he can someday, has been Rob Ducey. Trying to get him to change his swing, stop uppercutting, learn at the left field a little bit, but not lose the knack of pulling the ball as he just did. There's an example of Ducey, the Gaston pupil, doing it right. Seven to five, and with Felix at the plate, this may not be over yet. Ducey at second base, and Junior has doubled, tripled his score twice today. And the left field, but that will do it. A line drive to Davis will end the regular season. Very promising five at bats by Junior Felix. So he hit the ball well four or five times. That's the final count, a two-game margin of victory for the Toronto Blue Jays as they win the American League East. And let's take one last journey now before we go. And have a chance to go the extra mile with us. Going the SO Extra Mile with Major League Player and Broadcaster Tony Kubek. He went from interim to the manager of the American League Eastern Division champion, the Blue Jays. It's Cito Gaston's team. He has managed 126 games in his lifetime, a 77 and 49 record. No manager in the Major League has had that kind of record over those 166 games. Cito Gaston. the Bass Blue Jays baseball on CTV. When we say the Suzuki Swift GT will take it to the limit, we mean the legal limit in 8.3 seconds. The 1990 Suzuki Swift GT.
fun for all, and all for fun. Amidst the soaring complexity of the integrated office system, rises the familiar voice of Bell, reducing the confusion of integrating telephones, PCs, mainframes, PDX, printers, fax, and service to a simple matter of communication. vision. Over 21 billion in assets under management, 40 years in real estate development, and leadership in life insurance innovations. To make your money shine, see the manufacturers. Two similar dressers with matching mirror. Both made by Palliser, both part of a terrific youth group. The competition sells theirs for $448. Leon's price, day in and day out, $331. That's $117 less than the competition. Remember, this is just one piece. Think how much you'd save if you bought the entire group. Why pay more when you don't have to? Leon's everyday price is the lowest price. Guaranteed. Safety, our first priority. Our business is making steel. Very good steel. The challenge is to make it safely. Very safely. We're working together using the latest technology, the right procedures, the right protective equipment, thorough training. Safety is everyone's responsibility. It's our number one priority. Stelco Steel. Quality people. Quality steel. Does your financial future feel out of control? Get a hold of the manufacturers and get some of the brightest minds in the financial industry to help you see your future and keep it under control. The Orioles reduced the Blue Jays' final winning margin in the East to two games, winning today's finale in Toronto by a score of 7-5, to five, and there it is. Horace Greeley said it. Go west, young man, and a couple of hours from now, 24 young men wearing Toronto colors will go west trying to bring a Canadian team to a World Series for the first time. It all starts in Oakland on Tuesday, Tony. The 89 wins is not the important thing. It's where they came from. Dave Steve against Dave Stewart, then Stottlemyre, Jimmy Key, Mike Flanagan, don't know uh, undecided here on the sheet we got the media information will it be mike moore in game two will it be storm davis or bob wells it's gonna be a very competitive league championship series i think with the blue jays not having an edge they'll be the underdogs but i may have to pick them they're, they're pretty good looking team right now right now they are oakland a very tough team we said they have the best record in baseball they'll be very hard to beat especially at home out in oakland but the jays did play well as we said in their last series out there we can't wait for it to begin you'll see it all right here on ctv on tuesday night you're watching the bass blue jays baseball on ctv that's athens on the third cairo on the 10th and beijing on the 19th and please get me there swiss air or i'm not going swiss air from Toronto Daily, the civilized way to the world. To confirm that Milan on the 2nd, Bombay on the 7th, and Nairobi on the 15th. And please get me there, Swiss Air, or I'm not going. Swiss Air, from Toronto Daily, the civilized way to the world. In times of indecision like these, it's always best to see what the professionals use. Professionals have been using mono brand caulking for over 20 years. If it's good enough for professionals, mono will do the job for you. So when the day comes, and it will, when you need to buy caulking, buy mono. The professional choice. There are two ways to make a Volkswagen go 225 kilometers an hour. a new Volkswagen. The new 
Corrado from Volkswagen. Introducing the Adidas Torsion Basketball Shoe. Move the way your foot moves. Created with one thing in mind. Winning. If you really want it, you can. Adidas Torsion. Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on CTV. Brought to you by Esso, makers of high-performance Esso Supreme Gasoline. By Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada. And proud sponsor of Labatt's Blue Pitch. From the major leagues to neighborhood diamonds, it's the way we play. And by Xerox, we answer to you. of CTV Sports, produced in association with TV Lebec by authority the Toronto Blue Jays. The final score here today, the Orioles win it 7-5. to five. The winning pitcher, Ben McDonald, the loser, Mauro Gazzo, at 4-1. The Lebecs, players of the game, for Toronto, Fred McGriff, he'll receive the Poland Pro Chainsaw. For Baltimore, Tim Hewlett, he'll receive Cannon's new Primus shot. Major League Baseball next on CTV. Be sure to join us Tuesday, October the 3rd for a pre-series show at 7.30 Eastern Time preceding Game 1 of the American League Championship Series. Check your local listing. Gotta have the equipment, you've gotta have the training in order to properly fix the car. Robert Taggart is a tune-up specialist for Goodyear. Well, this computer, I, by just by hooking the leads up onto your engine, I can diagnose from everything from your battery straight back through to your fuel system. Check out every component, every piece to make sure it's operating properly, working properly together. The Goodyear Diagnostic Tune-Up. Signed, sealed, and certified by Goodyear. I know exactly where the problem is, exactly where to go, and exactly what to do to cure it. Columbia. Experience an unforgettable telefishing adventure. And don't forget your Visa card, because at Nemo Bay, they don't take you where the fish aren't biting, and they don't take masks.
MasterCard. Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. 3M has just wiped out a major refinishing problem. Now you don't have to put up with the bubbles and brush marks of ordinary polyurethane finishes. Introducing new Scotchgard brand Wipe-On Poly Finish. Hand-rubbed beauty with more protection than ordinary polyurethanes. In a wipe-on formulation, Scotchgard brand Wipe-On Poly Finish. Part of the innovative wood refinishing system from 3M. Whenever you buy a 3M or Scotch brand product, 3M will make a contribution to coaching in Canada. Mild-mannered, unassuming Eddie Essex has his own way of dealing with city life. Arid, extra dry vermin keeps Eddie Essex super cool all day long. Oh. Arid, extra dry for men. Rub a side tree by top. Any tricky relief for sore aching muscles. A five three five. Sister Kate, tonight at 7 on CFTO TV. Due to the length of the preceding sports coverage, we now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. <gasps> what is that? Look! Stolen bagpipes! What are they doing over there? was the handsomest yard in the neighborhood. Now look at it. Instant eyesore. Well, melt my butter. Scrooge with duck. Oh, how fabulous. <laughs> I'm Cookie Blur, and this is my sweet little pickle. I've seen you on TV and in the Duckburg Inquirer, and now here you're our neighbor. <laughs> Come on, let's cut dirt and meet my hubby. How you doing, fella? Tiny Blur. What an honor to shake your acquaintance. <laughs> Are you my new neighbor? Guilty as charged. Used to be we never could dream of living next door to someone whose pockets as deep as yours. But then we just got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we bought this lottery ticket and poof, 10 million frog skins fell in our lap. You won 10 million dollars. <laughs> about the World Series in March. But it all fell apart when the season began. The first blow came in Texas. Cecilio Guante nailed Tony Fernandez in the cheek with a fastball, and he missed a month. It affected his play at the plate most of the season. As the struggle continued, the first trade of the year, Jesse Barfield, whose average hovered around 200, was sent to the Yankees for Al Leiter. Barfield improved while Leiter suffered shoulder problems and started just once for the Jays. By early May, it became obvious something had to be done. And after winning just 12 of their first 36 games, the Jays fired Jimmy Williams. The search for a replacement lasted about a week. The Jays tried to hire former Yankee manager Lou Pinella. That fell through. And then after denying that he was even in the running, Pat Gillick announced that batting instructor Cito Gaston had been given the job on a permanent basis. Cito was the fan's choice, and it became apparent that he was the player's choice as well. The team turned around almost instantly. That became apparent June 4th, a Sunday in Boston, when the Jays trailed the Red Sox 10-0 but bounced back to win 13-11. The next day, the Jays returned to Toronto in their new home. Gone was Exhibition Stadium, and it was Hello Sky Dome. It wasn't quite finished, but the Jays moved in and promptly lost their first two games to Milwaukee. But with sellouts every night, the Jays surpassed the 3 million mark in attendance, a new American League record. July saw the Jays continue to improve, and in early August, the Yankees were in town. Dave Steve on the mound, two out in the ninth. Roberto Kelly dinged Steve for a hit to left as Steve was just one pitch away from a perfect game. Also in early August, another trade. The Jays acquired Mookie Wilson from the Mets for Jeff Musselman and the minor leaguer. Mookie became a fan favorite. His intensity, drive, and desire propelled the team, and it became contagious. He turned singles into doubles, doubles into triples, and he was a threat to score any time. Through August, the Jays continued their charge towards top spot in the AL East. And then on September 1st, it happened. The Jays were number one in their division. They had the best record in all of baseball since the All-Star break. They remained in top spot for a month. The battle was on with Baltimore for the title, the worst team in the American League last year, with a record of 54 and 107. 
they battled the Jays until the very end, with schedule makers wringing their hands with glee when the season ended at the Sky Dome, with the Orioles facing the Jays and a chance to advance to the playoffs on the line. For the Jays, the scenario was simple. Win two of three and head to the playoffs. Friday night, a record crowd at the Sky Dome. Tied at one, bottom of the 11th. Lloyd Mosby lashes one off the wall in left field. The Jays win it 2-1. On Saturday, Baltimore put a scare into the Jays, taking a 3-1 lead, but Toronto came back in the eighth. George Bell with a sacrifice fly to right. Mookie Wilson tags and scores. It was 4-3 Toronto. Then with two out, Tom Henke facing Larry Sheep. Henke strikes him out. The Jays win the American League East title. They now face Oakland in the American League Championship Series on Tuesday. And just about everybody has had something to say about the Jays after their unbelievable win over the Orioles. Even well-known comedian Bill Cosby. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a Blue Jay. <laughs> but if you play like one, you're going to win. Blue Jays are tough and they're fierce. <laughs> yes, they are. Tough and fierce. <laughs> they'll, they'll kill a squirrel. <laughs> Poor Oriole wouldn't have a chance. They may be tough and fierce, but those Oakland A's are going to be tough and fierce. On TFA. You're watching TSN, the Sports Network. This week on the Blue Jay Show. And it's on to Oakland for the American League Championship Series. John Wells. Welcome to the Blue Jays show. Well, the word choke can no longer be used to describe the Blue Jays, at least not the Jays of 1989. On Saturday, Toronto capped off a roller coaster season with a dramatic 4-3 win over the Cinderella Baltimore Orioles. In the process, the Jays won the American League Eastern Division title for the second time in five years. Mark Jones followed the Jays down the stretch and takes us through a wonderful wild weekend, beginning with the clincher on Saturday. Monday in Before the game One even Frank started, Robinson Frank Robinson threw a curveball at the Blue Jays. Scheduled starter Pete Harness stepped on a nail the night before the big game, so Dave Johnson got to start for the Birds. However, the switch didn't seem to bother the Blue Jays early on. Lloyd Mosby led off with a walk and eventually came around to score on George Bell's single to right. The Jays were on their way with a 1-0 lead after one inning. But things fell apart for Jimmy Key in a very controversial third inning. First, Frank Robinson delayed the start of the inning by saying that the lights should remain on for the entire game since they are on when the game started. After that problem was resolved, Key was on the wrong end of a very close play at first base as the Orioles started a rally. More controversy two batters later. Cal Ripken doubled down the left field line. A fan reached over the wall and grabbed the ball. Initially, umpires said that Bradley would advance only the third on the ground rule double. But home plate umpire John Shulock ruled that Bradley would have scored without the fan interference, and the run stood. That brought Cito Gaston out to argue, but to no avail. The bad inning continued for Key with the next batter. Randy Milligan singled to left to score Cal Ripken, and the Orioles held a 2-1 lead. It was obvious by this time that Key didn't have his good stuff, and the Orioles touched him for another run in the fourth. Bradley beat out an infield chopper, allowing Mike Devereaux to score, and suddenly the Orioles led it 3-1. Meanwhile, Dave Johnson had settled down. He cruised through the middle innings as the Jays managed only two hits. The Jays hit Johnson hard in several innings, but came away empty-handed, and the frustration increased. But that all changed in the bottom of the eighth. Johnson walked Nelson Liriano on a full count pitch, and Robinson decided he had seen enough. Enter Kevin Hickey but he brought his gasoline can with him and fanned the flames by walking Manny Lee. Hickey's problems continued as he went 2-1 and one on Lloyd Mosby before Robinson brought in Mark Williamson. Mosby battled and managed to drop down a bunt that started foul and spun back into fair territory. The sacrifice put runners at second and third with one out. Mookie Wilson then stepped in and sliced a single to left to score one run, and the Orioles' lead was trimmed to one. The Sky Dome was rocking when the slumping Fred McGriff stepped in and lined a clean single to left to score the tying run. Wilson was running on the play, and he ended up on third. 
Johnson's frustration showed as he watched all his work go to waste. Up next was George Bell, and there was no one else you'd wanted the plate in this situation. Bell delivered once again. A long fly ball to right center was more than enough to score Wilson with the game's go-ahead run. The Jays led 4-3 as 49,000-plus celebrated a miraculous comeback. Tom Henke started the ninth and quickly got two out. The Terminator then wrapped it up by striking out pinch hitter Larry Sheets, and the Blue Jays were Oakland bound as champions of the American League East. Not surprisingly, it was real pandemonium in the Jays' clubhouse as a year's worth of emotion poured out and the players really whooped it up. The champagne was on ice and the Blue Jays really let loose. Yeah, we played good baseball in the eighth inning. It was the kind of baseball that you uh, that you got to play to win ball games, and we're a champion. You know, uh, we played great. We deserve to be here, and uh, it's a great feeling. This is what it's all about: winning baseball. Little boy, boom! All right, baby. I didn't have my good stuff today. Uh, my location was off, similar to the Boston game. But to me, I was fortunate to be out with three runs in four innings, and I told Cito that the best for the team to take me out and get somebody else in and try to hold them there. And, and Frank Wills did a great job, and we came back and won, and that's that's my mind. Oh, what's chemistry? You know. I, uh, guys going around hugging each other all day and stuff, you know, it's just a matter of I think everybody gets along here. We got a good bunch of guys, good bunch of young guys, too, so we're going to be around for a long time, and uh, it feels good. Cito, you know, and then and, and, and the whole team did a great job. I said, you know, Cito's, you know, took us in good shape, and then he no one had to make the move and everything. Like, you know, today he takes, you know, he takes Jimmy Key out, and he brings, uh, Front wheel and the front wheel do a you know actually looks you know great job and hold those guys right there and I think you know it's great when you got a confidence in your boot but you know you can do all kind of stuff and that's what he do. I guess it can never be said again that the Blue Jays choke. Well, I was I, I went to a Toronto fan and you know old Canadian fan you know don't worry about an airport about the Blue Jays way all the way to September and October. On the other side of the diamond, the mood was understandably different. Midnight had finally struck for the Cinderella Orioles and the fairy tale had finally come to an end. Baltimore had nothing to be ashamed of this season, but to come so close and then to have to walk away empty-handed was very hard to take. There is no reason to hang our heads. We've had a great season. Uh, the expectations weren't high for the ball club out of spring training. We didn't know what we were capable of. And to go to the last uh, weekend of the series with a chance to do it, with the opportunity to win, uh, it was exciting. And uh, I'll cherish the experience in the moment because they were two exciting ball games. And, um, even the World Series or even uh, the playoffs, you know, didn't seem to be as exciting as these two ball games. Where do you guys go from here? I mean, you went from last to almost first in one year. What next year? Well, I think the whole uh, group here is going to benefit from this experience. Um, we had the, uh, the uh, nucleus of a pretty young ball club, and uh, the only thing maybe we lacked all year long was experience, and we gained experience, and we played well as the season progressed, and I think we're all going to learn from this experience and be able to uh, uh, to help it, it, to just to be able to help out next year. I think we'll learn from it, and we'll be a better ball club as a result of this experience, even in defeat. It was uh, an outstanding season, and uh, the last two days will take nothing away from that. Uh, you know, we played well all year long. We came much farther than anyone thought we could, or even dreamed that we could, and uh, we just didn't take that extra step. Uh, so when we were in the situation here, there's only one team that was going to walk away happy and it happened to be the Blue Jays, and they, they deserve it. They played very well the last couple of days, and uh, they earned it, and uh, the better team won this time around. The Orioles are a good team. They're a young team, and we probably haven't heard the last of them yet. They'll be back next year in the American League East. Well, time for a quick break on the Blue Jays show, but still to come, and look at how Toronto fans reacted downtown after the big win. Here's McGuire coming along to the field. And yeah, this could be the last play of the season for these guys, Bubba. That's the truth, partner. Third down and long, and here's the snap. Looks like play action, and what a block by Crawford. He just threw it on Martin. Crashed him. McGuire's in the clear, and Bukowski made the big play, and what a play. Let's look at it again. The trap bell going the wrong way. Leveled Martin, clear to lane here, and Bukowski and McGuire hooked up to make it to the one. Yeah, first and goal, which should be an easy six. Are you Bruce? Let's talk about it. Well, Bubba, hackable play, partner. So what's little dandruff? Okay, 
Imagine you're at the social event of the year, and your dream girl says hello, just as you do this. Her first impression? What a hunk. It's only a few flakes. Give me a break. The breaks are you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So? Try this. Head and shoulders? But you don't have dandruff. Your hair looks great. Bingo. Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Well, as usual, the Sky Dome was sold out for Saturday's game. Many fans had to make other arrangements to watch the game. Just like many fans from coast to coast in Canada. Downtown Toronto bars were filled to capacity as Blue Jay fans agonized over every pitch. Mark Bunting was there. The Wheat Sheaf Tavern at King and Bathurst was packed Saturday afternoon to watch the Jays try and clinch the title. The beer was flowing, as were the emotions hanging on every play. The place was fairly subdued until Mookie Wilson started the Jays' comeback. The decibel level got even higher when Fred McGriff tied the ball game. And then with the Jays ahead 4-3, to three, the fans could smell the final out. the custom in Toronto, the people spill out onto Young Street to whoop it up. Someone else who was out that night celebrating and partying and enjoying everything is with me right now, manager Cito Gaston. Cito, was Saturday when you won against Baltimore the biggest thrill of your baseball career? I think it was one of them and probably, probably the biggest thrill. Uh, of course, we, it was nice in 85, but uh, I think in 85 we didn't have it easier, but a, a bit easier than we did this year. We had to come back from a, a long uh, a long way back in the pack, and uh, we managed to play hard and catch up with him, and uh, we ended up playing him yesterday. Cito, it wasn't easy. When you took this team over, you were 12 and 24. Jimmy Williams was fired. If you had to put your finger on one thing, what turned it around for the Blue Jays? You know what? I, I'll tell you what. I, I still believe that we came out of spring train with a good ball club, and uh, we just didn't play well the first 36 ball games. But, uh, you know, as far as uh, things that I've did, it's just to uh, move the lineup around a little bit. Uh, we opened up running a little bit more, and uh, our guys played well. They just they just went out and did the job for us. You stuck with a couple veterans throughout the course of the season, namely Lloyd Mosby. Uh, what do you say to the so-called uh, experts now who wanted to run the guy out of town? Well, those so-called experts, uh, they don't know the guys on the club, and uh, I really don't have anything to say to them. I mean, I could really say, well, I told you so, but I won't say that. <laughs> Uh, it's just that uh, I had a lot of faith in Mosby, and I felt like uh, in order for us to win the East, we had to have Mosby in the lineup and playing and contributing, and he did do that. So, you know, the team isn't hitting particularly well right now. Is that a big concern heading into the Oakland series? Well, you know, I, I think we're going to come out of it, and uh, sometimes uh, it's kind of great that we did win this thing and we wasn't hitting that well because who knows, on Tuesday we might go out there, we might open it up for a week, a week and a half, and it might be just enough to beat the Oakland A's. What kind of pitching rotation can we expect to see over the course of the series? Well, right now we're going to start with Dave Steve, go with Todd Stalemar, and then uh, come back uh, home here and, and open with Key and then Flanagan, and then back the same way uh, as far as uh, uh, Steve, Todd, and, and uh, Key. And uh, hopefully we don't have to go back to Oakland. <laughs> Flanagan uh, might surprise a few people because uh, he's been passed over in the last week of the regular season here. Why do you decide to put him back in? 
Well, I think Mike, well, Mike has fits well against Oakland. In fact, uh, uh, maybe we should have him in there for a couple of starts, but uh, he fits well, and uh, he's deserved to, to be back in there. Uh, we just uh, uh, went over some stats and stuff like that uh, against Baltimore, and we decided to go with the guys that we did go with against Baltimore. Well, Cito, we want to thank you very much for joining us, and uh, hey, this is playoff time, this is championship time. Enjoy yourself. This is what it's all about. You're right. We're going to enjoy it, too. Thank you. <laughs> Hope you do well. Cito, thanks very much for joining us. And still to come on the Blue Jays show, we'll preview the big series between Oakland and Toronto. So stay with us. It's the most natural thing in the world. No. Yes. <laughs> no. It's a beautiful experience. St. Jerome's Hospital. John Travolta. Come on, breathe deep, breathe deep. Try to help me this time. Kirstie Alley. And Bruce Willis as the voice of Mikey. Discover with Mikey the wonders of life. I got something cold and wet in my shorts down here. Guys, listen, fellas. The unexpected delights of family. Oh, yeah. She's gone. One of those little furry things over your eyes. Let me grab one. Come here. There we go. And the gratifying search. You know, that's breast milk. For the perfect daddy. I'm just yuts. Look who's talking. What a sweetie. You must be thinking the same thing I am. <laughs> Lunch. Yeah, right back at you, babe. Yeah. Sneak preview Friday, October 6th and Saturday, October 7th at a theater near you. Good paint is easy to apply without dripping or bubbling. And in independent tests, Parrot performed as well or better than six other leading paints, some costing much more. Looking for a paint you can feel comfortable with? Para performs. Good paint is a thing of beauty, and scrubbability helps it stay that way. In independent tests, Para performed as well or better than six other leading paints, some costing much more. Pick the paint with a clean reputation. Para performs. Last season, the Oakland Athletics came into the playoffs as the strongest team on paper. They easily got by the Red Sox in the American League Championship Series, but stumbled into the World Series against the Dodgers. Well, the A's come into this year's playoffs as the heavy favorites once more. And on paper, anyway, they hold a distinct advantage over the Blue Jays. Mark Jones has a preview of the big series. A closer look at the best of seven matchups starting Tuesday shows the Athletics with the lead in the season series 7-5. to five. But with Cito Gaston at the helm, Toronto was 4-4 four and four against Oakland. The Jays' starting staff has had its problems getting everyone in sync this season. When one starter is on, someone else is off. Although they don't boast a 20-game winner, they have been tough down the stretch. Jimmy Key has pitched well since coming off the DL, and Dave Steve has re-emerged as the ace of the snap. Both Steve and Todd Stottlemyre will be important if the Jays hope to keep Oakland's offense in check. The numbers say the Athletics have the best starting staff in the American League. The starting rotation there produced four 17-game winners for the first time in the 80s. Game one starter Dave Stewart is the only pitcher to register three consecutive 20-win seasons since 1978. Both staffs are good, but the Athletics are just a bit better. Advantage here, Oakland. At first glance, the edge in the bullpen would appear to go to Oakland and fireman Dennis Eckersley. Eck has been the best reliever over the past two seasons. But after Eckersley, there isn't much else. The middle relief is fair, and to the credit of the starting staff, has not been overworked. After a rough start to the season, Tom Hankey has regained his form and is pitching as well as any closer in the league. In addition to Hankey, right-hander Dwayne Ward can be brought in to hold the lead. And Jim Acker has been very effective as a setup man. David Wells has not had a lot of work lately, but he can get it done from the left side. As good as Eckersley is, he can't do the work of four men. Advantage here goes to Toronto. The Athletics offense is one of the most explosive in the league. In the middle of the lineup, the power is supplied by the Bash brothers, Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco. Not to be overlooked is Dave Parker, who, aside from having the best home run shot in the game, has had a fine year offensively. The rest of the lineup can hurt you in ways other than the power department. Ricky Henderson is a threat to steal a base at any time. Carney Lansford hits for average, and his bat control makes him an ideal man for the back end of the hit and run. Dave Henderson has a knack for coming up with a big hit. But aside from Parker and Ron Hassey, much of the power comes from the right side. They've probably got a better offensive club than us, but I, I'm a firm believer that offense, I mean, pitching stops the, 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 the hitters, and uh, hopefully we can do that. I mean, the Dodgers did to them last year, so hopefully we can accomplish that this year. The Blue Jay lineup is not quite as imposing as the Athletics. 
George Bell has been the most consistent run producer for Toronto, but he can't do it alone. The slumping Fred McGriff will have to come alive in the series to help Bell shoulder the offensive load. The Jays played solid fundamental baseball against Baltimore to clinch the title. Mookie Wilson must continue to play the hustling style of ball that injected life into the Jays when he was acquired from the Mets. Both he and Lloyd Mosby will have to get on base and make things happen to ease the long ball pressure on Bell and McGriff. Toronto's bats have been inconsistent of late, and the Oakland lineup has stronger hitters. The advantage here goes to Oakland. In his quiet, soft-spoken way, Cito Gaston has done a great job since taking over as manager. Although he was with the team in 1985, the only thing Gaston doesn't have is experience pulling the strings as manager in the playoffs. Tony La Russa, on the other hand, is making his third trip to the league championship series. It's the second year in a row for the lawyer from Florida State. The advantage goes to Oakland. The Toronto bench possesses one of the best clutch pinch hitters in baseball in Lee Mazzilli. Mazzilli is from the old school and likes to work deep into the count before getting the pitch he likes to hit. Add the pinch running speed and savvy of Tom Lawless, and the Jays have the edge. Advantage, Toronto. The Athletics have an edge in team speed with Ricky Henderson, but thanks to Mookie Wilson, the gap has been narrowed. Still, Oakland gets the nod because it is just a bit more aggressive. Advantage, Oakland. In terms of overall experience, aside from the holdovers from 85, Mazzilli, Wilson, and Lawless are the only others with playoff experience. The A's, on the other hand, have not made any changes from last season's squad that belted the Boston Red Sox. The advantage goes to Oakland. There's two good ball clubs going up against each other. They're a little different. They play a little different style of baseball. Uh, Oakland uh, more uh, sit back and play for the big inning, although they will put some pressure on you on the bases. Uh, their starting pitching is outstanding. Their bullpen is good. Uh, Toronto's at some good, good starting pitching, and their uh, bullpen is terrific. Uh, you know, if you don't get to this ball club early, that started, uh, you almost uh, can say you're not going to score once they start going into the bullpen. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be the team that plays the best defensive uh, baseball uh, on the field. Uh, it's going to be the team that comes out ahead. And finally, what about the pressure? The Athletics would no doubt like to get back to the Fall Classic and win it this time. They have something to prove. The Jays, given up for dead in mid-May, had to wait until August the 15th to leave the 500 mark in the rearview mirror. With the pressure squarely on the A's, the advantage goes to Toronto. With nothing to lose, they should be loose, and this may be the biggest factor in Toronto's favor. Joining us now, Peter Gammons, renowned sports writer with Sports Illustrated magazine, Peter, Oakland against Toronto, the ALCS. How do you see the series stacking up? Well, I think it's going to be a much closer series than a lot of people think. I think there's a, a feeling around the United States that this is going to be an easy series. The A's are the best team in baseball, and they're geared up to try to win it this year. But I, I really think that, that winning the, the East has finally lifted this sort of curse or this cloud off the Blue Jays. For the first time in five years, they're not favored in something. And I think that's a real relief for these guys. I think it's been very hard for them to play. I don't think they've really had fun since the playoffs in 85 when they were supposed to win and didn't. And there's always been this thing on their back. And I think now they're just going out with nothing to lose. And if you look at the history of the postseason the last few years, the Royals in 85, the Twins in 87, the Dodgers last year, that's been an important thing. Teams with nothing to lose. And in all those cases, the team that was picked to be the worst of the four playoff teams has ended up winning, and I think the Blue Jays probably are a better team than any of those teams. The Jays are loose right now, no doubt about it, and uh, some people are maybe saying they're a team of destiny, but do they have the pitching uh, to handle the big, powerful Oakland bats? you got Henderson, Canseco, McGuire, and Parker. Well, I think that's it. This is a pitching series. I mean, and the Blue Jays barely scored three runs a game down the stretch the last 12 or 13 games. The question is, can the A's pitching just shut them down entirely? But there's also the question, why can't the Blue Jays pitching do the same? They, with Steve and, and Stottlemyre and Key, they have good starters. In my mind, I think Stottlemyre may be the key to the series. And I really believe that because I think he, like Tim Belcher last year, has the ability to just all of a sudden blossom in the postseason. The way he pitched against Baltimore with all the extra outs that he had to get, and he just bore down, and he pitched great. He could be one of those guys who just takes off. And let's face it, I think the two bullpens are the best in the American League. They match up very well, as we saw in the Baltimore series. The Ackers and the Wards and the Wells, and especially Tom Hickey, can shut anybody down under pressure. The A's bullpen shut down people under pressure for two years. So it might be a little bit more evenly matched than we think and relaxed 
you might see guys like George Bell and Tony Fernandez and Fred McGriff start to hit again. I mean, we they haven't been hot. And there's one more guy that I really think might Who's come that? up with a big playoff series, and that's Lloyd Moses. Why do you say that? Well, hometown factor involved? Hometown factor. He's playing on grass in Oakland. And I think there are two different Lloyd Mosby's as players, grass and artificial turf. And also, I think in 87, um, down the stretch those last 10 days, he was the best player on the Blue Jays. He, he hit over 400 in that stretch and was on base more than 50% of the time. He got the big hit Friday night. He's played graded bats in the whole Baltimore series. I just have a feeling that the Lloyd is one of those guys that when it's the money's on the line, it's time to shine. He's an extraordinary player. Mosby may be one of the heroes. I guess we'll see about uh, maybe 10 days from now we'll have a winner. All Thanks right. for joining us, Peter. Thank you. Still a lot more ahead on the Blue Jays show, including a musical look back at the year that was for the Jays. Stay with us. What's little dandruff? Okay. Imagine your dream girl says hello, just as you do this. So? Try this. Head and shoulders? But you don't have dandruff. Bingo. Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to attempt another McCain cheddar taste test. Wendy has the McCain cheddar, and her grandpa has the other leading brand. Wendy's tasting hers. It's smooth, smooth as the fresh milk it's made from. She really loves that creamy McCain taste. Uh, sir, please, taste your own cheese. Sir. Oh, well, it's no surprise, because McCain calls him a century of cheese making to create that winning taste. Grandpa likes McCain. If you want to watch your favorite hockey players past and present, watch Don Cherry's Grapevine on TSN. Don Cherry's Grapevine, every week on TSN. Well, the Blue Jays went through a lot during the 89 regular season. Jimmy Williams was fired, Jesse Barfield was traded, George Bell battled with the fans, and the Jays moved into their new home at the Sky Dome. It's been a season that will long be remembered, and it's not over yet. We'll follow the Blue Jays all the way through the playoffs, and bring you all the news and highlights as the Jays try to become the first Canadian team ever to get to the World Series and win one. Our next 30-minute feature report on the Blue Jays will come your way this Friday at 7.30 Eastern Time from the Sky Dome. For Mark Jones, I'm John Wells. See you soon. They were 10 back. Now they're a strike away from clinching. The 1-2 pitch. The Toronto Blue Jays are Oakland bound.
I'm Dick Urban. Behind me is the Montreal Forum, where for many years I've watched hockey's great... Again. L'Oreal introduces Plenitude, a proven success in France for reducing the signs of aging. Your ticket to the baseball playoffs is CFTO TV. I call it a dead heat in seven. I think it'll, somebody will win four and lose three, and that's it. But there's not going to be no mismatch either way. If the Toronto pitching's not hot early, then Oakland's got the decided advantage. I really like the job Cito has done with this ball club. Really pulled it together. And I've got to give the edge to the starters for Oakland and the bullpen to uh, Toronto. They were ten back. Now they're a strike away from clinching. The one-two pitch. The Toronto Blue Jays are Oakland bound. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada, and proud sponsor of Labatt's Blue Pitch. From the major league to neighborhood diamonds, it's the way we play. Skydome celebration, we move west of the hills of Oakland, California, the other city by the bay. This is the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, site of game one of the championship series of the American League. You know, there's always something magical when the postseason time comes, especially when your team is involved. And indeed, all of Canada is behind the Blue Jays, as for the second time in four years, they try to qualify for a World Series date. In the 30 minutes between now and game time, we'll cover all the bases for you, tell you what to look for in this best of seven showdown. Right now, let's go inside this beautiful ballpark and see if Fergie's right out yet. It's a gorgeous day, Don, and yes, I am dry, but I must remind everyone, I have two more suits standing by for two more champagne celebrations. It's been a great ride for Blue Jay fans this year, and it's going to get better in the next three weeks. We're going to have a half-hour show. It's going to be a look at the stars for tonight's ball game, so don't go away. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on CTV. Developments in pain relief don't come along every day. Now in Canada, there's Advil. Advil has the strength to deliver really effective pain relief. One is often enough. Try a new Advil. For all those sufferers of the sinus cold who want Tristan Tablet's effective relief from the congestion, pressure, and pain, yet need to stay alert, there's Tristan ND. There are two ways to make a Volkswagen go 225 kilometers an hour. The other way is to make a new Volkswagen. The new Corrado from Volkswagen. How easy is it to find a Blue Jay fan here at the Oakland Coliseum? Well, let's find out. There's a group of people sitting here. Sir, where are you from? I'm from San Francisco. My name's Dave, and I'm a Blue Jay fan. All right. Who's your favorite player? Freddie McGriff. How many will it take for the Blue Jays to win it in? Uh, they're going to go all the way in seven here, and then it's going to take them four in San Francisco. Oh, so the World Series would be easy then, right? Absolutely. All right. What about this gentleman? Where are you I'm from? I'm an A's fan, but I'm from Detroit. But why would you cheer for the A's? I've been out here 10 years. And <laughs> what the heck? They're looking good. They sure are. Okay, what about you, sir? Yes, sir. I'm from the San Fernando Valley, and the player I like is Tom Henke. Good for you. How many will it take the Blue Jays to win this in? Six. Probably, it'll probably go seven. I think the Blue Jays will do it in seven. All right, this young lady, who are you cheering for? Freddie McGriff, number 19. All right, you're a Blue Jay fan. How many? How many will they win it in? Well, I hope they can do it in as few as possible. <laughs> that would be four. <laughs> Very good. Let's go to this shot. You got a Mets hat. You must be a Mookie Wilson fan. Yeah, I happen to like Mookie Wilson. I also like Fred McGriff because I'm a left-handed first baseman, too, and he hits for a lot of power. Yeah, but are you any good? Yeah, I'm just as good as Fred McGriff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this fellow sitting back here. He's got an Oakland hat on. He's drinking beer. He looks like he's having a good time. In fact, he looks like he's never left that seat. 
No, I haven't actually. But I'll tell you who the best player in the American League is. That's Jose Canseco. That's only for a half a season, too, isn't it? Hi. Here's a couple of gentlemen here. Where are you from, sir? We're from Porterville, California. That's where... Porterville, hold it. That name rings a bell. <laughs> it rings a bell, but that's where Rance Mullinex is from. That's and right. and uh, I known him for like 15 years i coached him three years in basketball and uh, we're still good friends and that's jason how many uh hopefully hopefully less than 12 but i think it'll go seven <laughs> all right and you must be from the same area all right come on you blue jays hey <laughs> after a strong 22 and 7 september of 88 which carried over to spring training the toronto team headed north totally convinced that this was the year of the blue jays this past year, we have we have a great attitude. The work habits are there. I mean, everyone went about their business this spring, and we knew what we had to do. We had to accomplish something, and I think last September was a stepping stone for us, and we found out there what the character of this ball club was made of. Opening day at Kansas City further gave credence to those words as the Jays beat the Royals 4-3. As fate would have it, opening day was the only time Toronto would be alone in first place until the days grew short in September. It was a perplexing few months. Tom Henke having troubles in the mound, and the Jays were losing. Then, near tragedy, when Tony Fernandez went down in a heap in Texas with a demolished cheekbone. Carried off the field, Fernandez came back in a surprisingly short 25 days, but it would take him a few weeks more to get back in top four. Without Fernandez, the club did not play heads-up baseball, and the losses mounted third, fourth, fifth place. It was not pleasant. Eventually, manager Jimmy Williams was given his walking papers, and a few days later, coach Cito Gaston was named the Blue Jays' manager for the rest of the season. They, came, they asked me, and I said, okay, uh, I think I can do the job, and uh, I said, okay, the job's yours. Under Gaston, the Blue Jays had many more ups and downs. He handled the millionaires and soon-to-be millionaires with a quiet dignity that commanded respect in return. But good times started to roll. Junior Felix staging his own Boston Tea Party with an 11 RBI weekend, including an inside the park home run in Fenway against the Red Sox. Straight from Boston, the Blue Jays moved to their new Sky Dome. And although it took a while for the team to feel at home there in the grand new facility, the positive effects of the sellout crowds inspired the Blue Jays to winning ways. The big guy, Fred McGriff, naturally hit the first home run in the Sky Dome. Just one of 36 he would hit this season on his way to the American League home run crown. And remember how Dave, Steve, and everybody sitting on the edge of history just one pitch away from a perfect game against the New York Yankees. As I think about it, I remember the last time I was in that situation, and uh, I said if I come across that situation again, that uh, I would back off and uh, really uh, give it a lot of thought as to what I want to do, and maybe even call out Ernie and just uh, go over the situation with him and uh, his thoughts. And uh, as it happened, I didn't do that, and it's almost the kind of thing where you just want to go right at him and, and get it done and, uh, you know, get the end result. So. Yeah, because you were 2-0, and, and that's maybe when you should have said, hey, Let's take our time. Yeah, most definitely. I should have probably just backed off and maybe called Ernie out and, and gone over with him what he wanted to do maybe, and uh, you know, maybe it would have turned out differently. And maybe I would have thrown a different pitch. George Bell is another reason the Blue Jays are in Oakland tonight for the American League Championship Series. Sometimes not understood, Bell played through physical and emotional ailments this year, and although his home run output was down, his hitting was timely, effective, and very much needed. But who was more needed this year than Jimmy Key? At midseason, he was struggling. So he sat out a couple of weeks. It was worth it. And coming down the stretch, when it became evident the Jays and Orioles would meet at the Sky Dome for the showdown series of the season, it was Jimmy Key who assessed the situation perfectly. He said, if we can't win at home, we don't deserve it. 89 was many things to many people. What a great thrill for Glen Allen Hill. A grand slam in his first major league game. One of eight grand slams this season, all by different hitters. Kelly Gruber playing through injuries would set one mark that will never be equaled. The first Blue Jay to hit for the cycle. 
out of the bullpen. Tom Henke got right back on track. Tom the Terminator was doing his thing. The emergence of Todd Sottlemyre is a dependable starter who has found life is better in the big. Mookie Wilson showing how it's done by performance. It's the way Mookie plays, and it's contagious. Back to the dome came the crowd for that super showdown of the season. It boiled down to a best of three against Baltimore. Game one went to the bottom of the 11th inning before Lloyd Mosby hit the left field wall to win the game two to one. Now the Jays needed just one more win to clinch a trip to Oakland for the American League Championship Series. Game two trailing 3-2 in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's Donovan Wright getting for a hit. The game's going to be tied. And that brings up Bell with runners at first and third. The 0-1. If he'll get the run home, maybe more. Finley goes back. He's got it. Mookie tags. And suddenly the Blue Jays are three outs from a trip to the postseason. They were ten back. Now they're a strike away from clinching. The one-two pitch. The Toronto Blue Jays are Oakland bound. It sure has been a sensational season for the Toronto Blue Jays, but it's been equally as good for the Oakland A's and their manager, Tony La Russa. As in most cases, the club belongs to the players. They're the ones that had to dig real deep uh, through the first half when we had most of the injuries. Here are the last two months, Fergie. We've been a healthy ball club and uh, a little weary at times, but uh, I thought early on they never flinched, never gave in with an injury, never made the excuse, well, it's not our year. And I think that's to their credit. Uh, uh, I think just about the time that we were about played out, then the front office jumps in and trades for Ricky, which really gave us a boost. So combination of our front office being on their toes and the players just were convinced and dedicated to taking their best shot. Come heck of high water, they're going to take their best shot, and I'm proud of them. And they feel very good about themselves. Is Ricky Henderson the key to your offense? No. No, because I'll guarantee you that... Uh, you can shut Ricky down any game you want in this series, and we got several other guys that are going to jump up and hurt you. And I think it's the same with the Blue Jays. That's one of the, the pluses of both offenses. There's so many problems up and down the lineup that uh, if, if you concentrate on one or two guys, uh, you're going to get beat by the six or seven that you don't. So, yeah, Ricky's a real problem for them, but uh, go ahead and concentrate on him and forget about Carney and Jose and Parker and McGuire and Dave Henderson and Spang. I'll go on and on. All right, let's look at your infield. Uh, you know, how do you assess your infield this year? Well, defensively, I, I like it a lot. The two corners are excellent. Uh, Carney's had a great year again defensively. Uh, Mark McGuire's had a great year defensively. I think they're both, you know, gold glovers. Uh, and then offensively, you know, Mark's got the big production. Carney had a great, great year. Hitting for that high an average in the two spot behind Ricky. Had to give up a lot of pitches, a lot at bats. Uh, in the middle, I think one of the keys to our story was when we lost Walter Weiss. And then later on, Glenn Hubbard had was in and out of the lineup. Mike Gallego came along and did a great job at short. Tony Phillips has been an inspired player. So, but whether it's Tony and, and Mike, or I'm sure you'll see Walter Weiss, uh, we feel very solid up the middle. We make the routine play and their heads up players. And here again, you get down to the eighth and ninth spots and uh, you throw the ball down the middle. And one of those two guys or both of them is going to get a base hit to hurt you. How well is Canseco swinging in the back? He's swinging very well. Uh, I mean, you look at his production in the second half of the season, and it shows you how amazing he is. I think the only thing is, uh, yeah, every once in a while he chases a bad pitch, and that's when he, I think he has a, you know, kind of funny little feeling in his wrist. But if he swings the ball in the strike zone, he's got no problem. He's got all the bad spit he ever had, and he's hitting it as far as ever. Henderson in center? Uh, Dave Henderson, I think one of our real unsung players, has had a great year, 80 RBIs. Even though his average is down, he was one of the guys, I think, along with Carney, uh, in Gallego that when we were really short and could not rest guys uh, he had to play way beyond when he should have been rested and he never gave in he never dodged the lineup and uh, in our clubhouse I don't think anybody sits any higher as far as respect and uh, Dave Henderson and Carney Dave Parker guys like that all right thanks Tony LaRusso okay first. now let's look at some not so great moments in baseball
Winter First, brought to you by Labatt's Blues. The Jays are going all the way. There's no question about that. Win or lose, you got to be with them. One ball club, undefeatable. Look who's on the outside looking in now. Win or lose. Blue Jays, just hang in there, give us your best, and that's all we ask from you. Now give me some free tickets. Two. I think they've got it this year. Well, I'm hoping so. We just have to believe it and it'll happen. It's going to be a zoo. That's what it's going to do. <laughs> Labatt Blues salutes the Blue Jays for the way they play. 3,000 years in here and nothing but priceless treasures. It would have cost those guys a lot less to give me McDonald's bacon double cheeseburgers. My favorite food and only $1.69. But hey, what a garage sale I'm going to have. The goddess of love should never have to go out to dinner alone. Isn't there anyone who will take me to McDonald's for a bacon double cheeseburger? The taste no god or mortal could resist. Zeus, Ares, maybe Stuart down in person. From Touchstone Pictures, he was framed and convicted Freeze! for a crime he didn't commit. They sent him to prison. You better get with the program, punk. We were owned by the state. They tried to keep him down. 90 days in the hole. But they didn't count on him fighting back. You know I'm innocent! Tom Selleck, fighting for the justice he deserves. Yeah! An innocent man. Starts Friday at a theater near you. This is the most beautiful house. And it's ours. <gasps> and Mike, he just wouldn't quit till he found my stained glass windows. Despite what Buster had to say. <laughs> I think he really got a kick out of us. Dan and Jenny Reese knew what they were looking for in all. And their Century 21 agent helped them find it. Bring it on home to me. Welcome back to Oakland's Alameda County Stadium for game one of the American League Championship Series. Our pregame look for you right here in CTV. And manager Tito Gaston, uh, back in spring training in Dunedin in the month of March, he really didn't have a notion that you'd be sitting here in this dugout at this time about to manage a team in a championship series, did you? Well, certainly not to uh, manage this team, but uh, in spring training, we thought that uh, we had a chance to be here as a team. But uh, you, never, you never know what's going to happen in life. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. and. Uh, Hopefully our guys will enjoy this and have fun with it. We talked about it a moment ago, the demands on a manager and players as well, but on a manager in a time like this, it's got to be incredible. Well, it is, and uh, I'll tell you what, I don't mind it out at the ballpark, but uh, I, I kind of resent people calling me at 7 o'clock in the morning, waking me up, and uh, when they're on the East Coast and it's 10 o'clock there, so that part of it's been tough. Yeah, it would be. The rotation that Oakland is throwing at you, solid pitching, no question, but it's your kind of pitching because you excel against the right-handed type. Yeah, that's true, uh, but uh, they have a good pitching staff. Even, even their bullpen is outstanding staff, a veteran staff, know how to pitch. So we got to stay close to them. Our pitchers have to pitch well, and uh, we have to play good defense and uh, stay close. We stay close, we have a chance. Does Ricky Henderson do things to a manager that other leadoff hitters don't do, an opposing manager? Well, it just depends on if you let him bother. You know if he gets on first, he's probably going to steal second and third. So uh, it's not a whole lot you can do unless you, you know, if uh, he attempts to steal second, you just throw the ball third and you probably get him sliding in the third. But otherwise, uh, the, I think he uh, distracts the pitcher more than anyone. And uh, hopefully what we're going to try to do, if he wants to steal second, uh, yeah, it's not too many times you throw him out. Let him steal it and uh, concentrate on the guy at the plate because now if you get him thinking about Ricky too much, get the pitcher thinking about Ricky too much, next thing you know you got a couple more base hits and now you're in real trouble. The guy's going to steal the back, so there's not a whole lot you can do about it. One final thing, Cito. Uh, any butterflies just minutes before the start of a big series? No, not really. I, I think that uh, uh, we deserve to be here. We played hard and uh, we're here. And, to me, I'm just going to enjoy it and, uh, and uh, have a lot of fun with it, and I hope the players have as much fun as I'm having with it. All right, enjoy it by all means, and uh, all Canada says win it by all means, Cito. Nice talking with you once again, and it comes down to a battle of the power and the glory. The Blue Jays have the power. Fergie has more on that with Fred and George. Fred and George, first of all, Fred, this is a predominantly right-handed pitching staff. You've got to like that. Oh, yeah, Ferg, and more or less, they come right at you. Uh, they don't really try to trick you too much. Stewart comes right at you. Uh, Welch, Storm Davis, all of them, they come right at you and, uh, like, hit me. So uh, it shall be interesting. You've had some good success against Oakland. Oh, yeah, uh, I feel good right now. Uh, I swung that better in BP today, and I feel ready to go. 
George Bell, you've carried this club all season long, along with Fred, 104 RBIs. Uh, what about Oakland and their pitching staff? Well, it's just, you know, like Freddie said, you know, they come right at you, and then they got good, uh, good pitching stuff, but uh, I'm be glad and happy, you know, he's behind Freddie because, you know, I, get, I go get some of the hit. And now, you know, in that case, you know, they they want to pitch Freddie, they got to pitch Freddie. If they got to pitch me, they got to pitch me. Will we see you in left field in this series? Let's, uh, let's not know about it. I feel pretty good. I went out there and throw today, and I don't feel pretty good. Any predictions? We're going to win. <laughs> and how many? I never said that. Why don't we go win? Fred? I'll take it any kind of way we can. Four games, five games, six games, Seven whatever. Games. I don't care. If we play eight, you know, it's no matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, no, good matter. luck. All right. Thank you. All right, let's go over to the other side of the dugout now, and here's Don Chevrier with the power of the Oakland A's. And the home run power of the A's comes from this bat and in the hands of Mark McGuire. Your 33 already rivals Freddie McGriff. A good matchup between you two for power. Well, I think it will be. Uh, you know, Freddie's had a great year. He's, uh, people really don't know much about him. Uh, he's had an MVP year. Uh, he's one big reason why Toronto's in the playoffs, and uh, along with George Bell, um, he's just a great player. You've got the home runs. The average is not where you want it to be. You mentioned it's almost your weight, and you want to get close to it. Well, but I, have you sacrificed <laughs> that for the power or the mechanics? Well, I, I just got through a, a time in baseball where you need some luck. I didn't have any luck at all. I was hitting the ball as best as anybody else, and I was going home with nothing to show for it. And when you do that, you're not going to hit for a high average. Uh, towards the end of the season, I started picking it up, got the home runs and RBIs. And for a power hitter, the damage is what matters, and uh, 95 RBIs and 33 home runs, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. Now Jose Canseco, and uh, it's been a half season for you, but a pretty good second half of that. It hasn't been that bad with all the injuries and with the uh, uh, awkward things that have been going on this year. Uh, I've played about 60-some-odd games. I've got a you know, pretty good uh, HR ratio with 17 and 56 RBI, so second half hasn't been that bad for me. It was against the Blue Jays when you came back, and you showed some power. Got a couple of home runs in the Sky Dome. <laughs> right, first game I came back, I had a home run near the first day with an RBI single. I think the next day I had another home run, and uh, I started off really fast. All of a sudden, the wrist uh, started bothering me again, and uh, I struggled a little bit, but that's how it's been the whole year. Where is it now? What percentage would it be at? It's about 80%. It's still not 100% uh, strength. I think I'm going to need the whole offseason uh, with some more rehab weightlifting to get it up there again. Okay, Jose, that is the power on this team. Now let's talk about the glory of tonight's starting Oakland pitcher. Dave Stewart, has there been some concern about your shoulder this season, especially the last two or three weeks? Well, uh, the last two or three weeks have actually been my, my best weeks. Um, you know, the problems that I had earlier, we've made adjustments with them uh, by um, strengthening programs and you know, good hard work. It's starting to feel good. Are you still throwing as hard as ever? Well, maybe not as hard. You know, I, I can get the, the good hard fastball, and when I need it, I pick my times. Uh, but mostly I'm doing a lot of pitching in and out, changing speeds, which I, I normally do. It's just, you know, I'm not throwing that good 90 every pitch. I can pick it, you know, like I said, I pick my spots. You're one and one against the Blue Jays. They beat you in Toronto this year. Yeah, yeah um, it was our, my first time in the uh, new stadium, and um, they, they did a pretty good job of hitting the ball that day. All right, thank you. Let's go over to the other side of the diamond, Don Chevrier with Dave Steed. Dave, the extra day's rest, is that going to help you, I think, in the start? Well, it's definitely going to help me, Don. Uh, you know, I've had a little bit of tendonitis and had a hard time getting over it, and the only way to get over that is with rest, so this extra day is going to definitely be beneficial to me. Well, the last thing you wanted to do is have to pitch against Baltimore Sunday, right? That's exactly right. That would have been on a three days rest, and, uh, you know, that would have been pushing it, but uh, if needed be, I would have been there. One more thing. Does Ricky Henderson do things to a pitcher's mind when he's in the number one spot against you? No, not really. Uh, you know, he's the uh, epitome of the number one hitter, so you've got to keep him off the base path you got to be awfully pumped up right about now. Yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Do well, and good luck to you and the Jays in the series for the American League Championship. Thank you. Dave Steve, tonight's starter. More from Oakland in just a moment. There are two ways to make a Volkswagen go 225 kilometers an hour. The other way is to make a new Volkswagen. Corrado from Volkswagen. Magic moment, 
It's the magic of Canada's favorite pudding, the richest tasting of all. So special we had to call it Magic Moments. Magic Moments. Magic Moments Pudding. Magic the moment you taste it. Ravioli, beefaroni, spaghetti and meatballs. When children find food this much fun to eat, why tell them it's good for them? Chef Boyardee! Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on CTV. Brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada, and proud sponsor of Labatt's Blue Pitch. From the major leagues to neighborhood diamonds, it's the way we play. The advanced scout for the Toronto Blue Jays, Gord Lakey. You have watched the A's the last 11 games they've played, 29 times this season. You have concerns, especially about Dave Stewart. He has some problems. Dave has not thrown the ball as well in his last two starts as he threw the previous three or four that I saw him. He has a strained rotator cuff, and he's not throwing the ball as... He throws the ball as hard as he did, but he struggles with his control. And hopefully we can get to him early. That's one of our main, main objectives, is try to score early against this guy. What else can Blue Jay fans look for from the Oakland A's that you've picked up on? What do you have to do to beat them? Well, they're a little different ball club with the addition of Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson and Carney Lansford are the guys that really make this club go. They hit one, two in the order. We need to not walk these hitters. We need to try to keep them off base, make them honest, hit their way on, and not to set the table for the big guys, McGuire and Canseco. Well, Fergie, you talk about valuable last-minute inside information from Gord Lakey. That is indeed interesting. Well, it sure is, Chevy. He has watched Oakland for the last 11 games, 29 games on the season. He is convinced that uh, Stewart has rotator cuff problem. The velocity is off, not what it used to be. And I think the Blue Jays are going to win tonight for that very reason, the scouting of Gord Lakey. These teams really match up very evenly as you go right down every category. But based on that, I think the series would be a lot closer than most people figured. Oakland's the favorite. I think the Blue Jays could win this starting tonight. Well, you heard Sparky Anderson off the top of our show when he said these two teams match up very evenly. I was talking to Bobby Valentine, the manager of the Texas Rangers. He said the same thing. And that seems to be the general consensus. Remember what happened to the Dodgers last year. It was pitching that won it for them. And that's what the Blue Jays will have to do here starting tonight. And who knows, that loss to the Dodgers may still haunt the A's right here in Oakland as they begin the championship series tonight. So sit back, relax. It's all coming your way. Total coverage on CTV, courtesy of NBC from Oakland.